Hey, it's Jeremy here. I've been designing for a decade and this month I'll be showing you all about mockups. Each week we'll dive into a new feature or tool to create eye-catching mockups for your products or your client work. I personally use mockups all the time for doing presentations when I'm working on a digital product and I need to make it look nice. So to create a mockup, just go to the left sidebar and click mockup and it will create this purple looking box and it'll say mock-up. On the top left, you'll see that it's auto-selected product photo. So you don't have to select any style yet. It will automatically do it for you. Now the difference between a mock-up and an image, an image will have a green square like this and you'll be able to select styles as you can see from the style selection. I'm going to just focus on creating a mock-up. I'm gonna just start off by putting a prompt inside the prompt bar on the top left. And for this one, I'm doing a dreamy cinematic, cinematic camping style photo with an enamel mug floating in a nice mountainous background. I'm gonna click generate here. Cool, and there we have it. We have a beautiful mock-up. If I zoom in, you can see we have a nice enamel mug there, lots of detail, beautiful sunlight there, and then we've got a nice blurred background of a mountain range. I think that looks really nice. One of the cool things with the mock-up feature is you can add logos into the mock-up. I've got this logo here that I created inside of Recraft. You can actually create logos by going to image, then selecting logo in the search bar and you can select any of these type of logos here and create a logo. All I gotta do is just scale this down to the rough size of my mug. And then all you gotta do is just drag and drop that vector logo on top of the image. So what I gotta do now is just scale it down just like this and I'm left clicking and dragging to move it around and I can scale it up to whatever size I want. If you hold control and zoom in with the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and I can press space bar to pan and there we have it. If you left click on that logo, I can actually change the colors really quickly. Maybe I want red, green, you know, whatever color you want, you can easily change that. And another cool thing as well, let me just quickly go to the color selector, click on this little square and you can change it to white. Then what I'm gonna do is go down, after selecting colors, you can go to the bottom and what you can actually do is you can repeat it and tile it to add a pattern. So I'm gonna select the logo and click repeat. And now if I scale it, you can see it's a repeating pattern, which is really cool. And if you left click and drag off that mug, it will add it to whatever object. So if you want it on the background, it will do that. If you drag it onto the rock, it will do that as you can see. And another quick tip is when I'm creating mockups, I just like to quickly duplicate it and create a bunch of them. As you can see here with that same enamel mug, you can create a whole bunch of different scenes. This one is different backgrounds of people holding a, the camping mug and others with a more of a mountain range, which is really cool and you can get a lot of really fast mockups by doing this method. You just hold Alt and Shift and duplicate, adjust the prompt. Maybe you want something else or maybe a different background, a lush mushroom forest, and we can quickly create a quick mockup within a few seconds. Now there's so many directions you can take this. There are many different types of mockups. You've got 3D mockups, apparel mockups, you've got product, branding, packaging, uh, web UI. It's best to be clear on what type of mockup you want to create first. Once you have an idea of the type of mockup you want, then we can start to have a clear structure before creating our mockups. An example of creating for an object, this one I did of orange juice in a square glass bottle. So you can see on the prompt, I created a highly detailed product photo shoot of a square glass bottle with a smooth white lid filled with vibrant orange juice with pulp. And I also selected the Blossom Glow style. So if you click on the styles, there's this nice one here called Blossom Glow and I got this effect. So what I can do is duplicate this and I can actually change the object. So instead of a glass bottle, maybe we want to do a round shampoo bottle or something. And we created a round bottle as we can see here. You wanna think about the scene, the surroundings, the background. For example, a white poster on an industrial wall with shadows overlaid with mo a Monstera plant in the foreground, textured wall, natural lighting. And this was the result that I got. You can see the nice plant adds a bit of realism. It's got that light reflecting from the right hand side, the nice shadows there. If I zoom in, you can see the wall has a nice uh, concrete texture and even the paper you can see has a little bit texture uh, on it as well. And so this looks really great and we can always take it further. We can even change up the colors as you can see here by adding a color palette. So for this color palette, I added a pink, yellow and blue and you can even customize that. And then you can take it one step further and changing the actual style of the mock-up by selecting any of the styles in the style section. 
Next, you want to think of the lighting. This is very important. Is it going to be cinematic, outdoor lighting, or studio lighting? This is an example of some beauty mockups that use a silhouette lighting. You can see if I select the image and go to the prompt, we've said that the silhouette of the bottle is clearly defined, partially visual. So you can see pump dispenser upright against the light. We're describing what, what it's doing and you get this result. Now, if you look at these mockups here, the lighting for this one is totally different. It's illuminated by vertical sunlight. And you can see here, it's also got the citrus splash style to it. You have full control over the lighting, vertical sunlight, this is what you get, totally different results. Next, you wanna think of texture. Put in my prompt, a close-up of a dark navy fabric shirt, pocket with a blank rectangular white patch sewn onto the pocket. Soft natural lighting, detailed textile, texture and a minimal studio style mock-up. And you'll get something like this with a detailed fabric texture on the shirt. So I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna say, instead of a white rectangle, a uh, navy fabric shirt pocket. And then I'm gonna just change up the framing. So I want a add a Gaussian blur on the, click generate. While I do that, I'm gonna change the shirt or trucker cap. So you can see you added a minimal blur on the edges there. As you can see, it didn't change the angle, which is fine. And here is what we did with a trucker hat, same style, navy, and it's really good. And then if you want to make it up close, we can say a macro light colored patch in the center, in the center of the hat. Soft natural light, digital text style, minimal studio lighting. So with that slight update, it zoomed in a little bit and added this patch. And then you want to think of the style. When it comes to style, it's super important in Recraft to select the right one. I've got three sets of mockups here. The top row has a style set to Botanic Calm, as we can see there. So you get more of a toned down with the colors, more cool tones, uh, more detail with the water droplets there. Looks really nice. These ones here is set to Soft Touch. So you get that very soft background, blurred background. You get the nice details of this, the shadows and the highlights there. Looks very elegant and high end. And then the last one is pink serenity style. So you can see it's got a heavy pink color to it, but it looks great with the water ripple effect with the nice glass bottles. This would work really nice for a skin or beauty brand. It's very crucial you select the right style because you can get totally different results depending on the style you select. Another example, if I reuse this orange bottle mock-up, you can see I've changed this style to a natural light and you get this, these nice images here, very clean, subtle. Then also we want to think about the color palette in this example of a man wearing orange baseball cap and an orange shirt with an orange background. Very cinematic, aesthetic. It looks like a real photo shoot. And we can take this, as you can see, a portrait of a man, a matching crew neck sweatshirt, deep orange background. We describe the tone. We use words like soft diffuse lighting, monochromatic um, lighting sculpts the face subtly. We described what the object is doing. So he's looking downward. And then we mentioned things like texture, fabric, minimal clean. You can get something like this and then we can just slowly tweak it, adding a color palette like this. We can even do a yellow one with a black and white effect. We can even change it to a woman. Now let's explore some other mock-up examples. I'm gonna hit mock-up and I'm gonna type in this prompt here. It's gonna be a phone in a desert Martian like environment. Uh, the phone is glowing, warm directional lighting. The mood is minimal yet cinematic, blending technology, technology with natural and alien-like environment. Look at that, love that. We've got a, a nice shadow, that desert vibe, that brown earth feels like it's on Mars or something. We can always just duplicate by holding Alt and Shift. And what I like to do is just keep the prompt, but just tweak a few of the elements. We'll say green, green moss, resembling a swamp lush swamp landscape. I'll keep the the phone as is, and I'm just focusing on the landscape and the lighting. I'm gonna change this, the mossy rock background, uh, I guess the mossy rock. We're gonna go, instead of warm, we'll go cool directional lighting, cast subtle shadows, emphasizing um, dramatic otherworldly settling. The mood is minimal yet cinematic, blending technology with. And then I'm gonna hit generate just by tweaking a few of the words in the prompt. It's a now a mossy environment. The lighting is coming from the left-hand side now, which I really love. And the phone looks the same. Here's another example that I generated, similar sort of style, but this time I said a iPhone floating in a room. Phone screen is glowing softly. The mood is minimal yet cinematic with added grain effect. 
depth of field studio lighting with la with ropes hanging and you can see the really the detail there see the depth of field so there's a bit of a blur in the foreground here you've got a rim light there and then lighting coming through and you've got a floating phone there Another example that I used of a product, minimalistic white bottle with a screw cap placed on a smooth brown surface, bathed in soft natural light, long diagonal shadows stretch across the backward, background wall. Calm elegance, centered, the bottle is centered, so being clear on the angle and the framing. Composition simple yet refined, focusing on light, shape, and material to create high-end product photography. And this is what we get. And then from that, I tweaked it, but this time I just met, said, kept everything the same, but changing it to a coffee packaging. And we did it again here, but I changed the color and the background of the wood, made it more earthy and textured as you can see there. Now, one of my favorite quick tips if you're struggling with a prompt, drag an image. This is an image I did for a client recently. I did a mock-up for a logo and I can go to ChatGPT and say, extract the prompt for this image. And then we can go into image here and I can paste this in. I can click on mock-up here paste that prompt from GPT and click generate. So you can see here's the original mockup that I created for one of my clients and here is the image it generated. Actually got the same sort of vibe. So it's got this one out of the plant, but it's got the shadows. It has that cabinet that's pretty similar. It added a mug and it's got the laptop there, which I think is pretty accurate. Look at the details here. So that's a fast way to do it. And then we can come in here and we can adjust the details. I want the laptop to be more close up and centered. I'm gonna change the angle of the laptop as well. I'm gonna click on negative prompt and with a negative prompt, I can type in plants, plant, and I can type in mug and I'm gonna click generate. So we can see in use here of the negative prompt, it actually removed the plant and the mug that was here in this frame. Adjusted the angle on a 40 degree angle, which looks really well. So I'm happy with this mock up. What I wanna do though, I, was, I wanna crop it because there's too much space at the top. So I'm just gonna duplicate this and click on rasterize at the top. This will turn into pixels. Now it's an image. I'm gonna press F for frame. I'm just gonna drag out a box for the frame. And then I'm gonna bring this image inside the frame and I'm gonna scale up that mock-up. So we get this cropped look with our laptop like this. And this is how we get sort of a nice zoomed in feel. And there we have it inside the frame. We've got this mock-up and then we can export that or we can crisp upscale. So let's crisp upscale that just to enhance the sharpness and the details. Then you can click on the frame, go to the top right, click export. Then we can save it as a JPEG and we'll leave the size as is. And now you got your image right there with your cool mockup and then you could, and then you can drop a logo or edit it, whatever you want. And that's a quick way to use a negative prompt and how to crop a mockup. In the next video, I'll show you how to mockupize any existing photo or image that you have.